name is Stan De Pril. I'm a vSAN specialist as he within VMware. Today I'm here to talk about vSAN and the basics of vSAN, right? Now, talking about the basics of vSAN without telling a little bit of the history why vSAN, I think that would be a good way to start, right? So, why vSAN? vSAN came from a problem that we had as a VMware admin and also from a business perspective. Now, if we look back to the day where we had a host and a VM, that VM was always linked to a LUN or an NFS volume or whatever, so it was always linked to a LUN, and that LUN was predefined, for example, in RAID 1. With one VM there was no issue, with two VMs there might be an issue, and with multiple or Let's call it hundreds of VMs, there might be more issues than only one. Now this VM is now being created, has a different characteristic. Now that LUN, what it's been, what it will land on is now in RAID 5. Now if you would have hundreds, potentially you could share one, but most of the time you would make different LUNs and different uh, ways of doing it. Now if you're on this side of the fence, you didn't control this side of the fence. And that makes it really, really hard to deliver in a timely manner, right? Now, if we look to today's world, today's world, we have hosts, and those hosts are at this moment performant enough to run more than only VMs. Now, let's draw four hosts now. And those four hosts, they all have CPU memory in there, and they have also disks in there. And that's basically where everything comes together with, with hyperconverged. This is where the world converges. Now, I can have a VM running here, and that VM that is running here has a certain uh, characteristic or a requirement. Now, this requirement cannot be fulfilled without the hardware underneath. Now, let's talk about that hardware first. For vSAN, we need a two-layered approach to store the data. We have an SSD, which we use as cache. And we also have a capacity layer. And that capacity layer consists of SSDs or magnetic spinning disks. And this will be used for capacity. Now, if you look at the way forward, this is what we call a disk group. And if we redraw the disk group again, we could have, we have at least one of those. And we will need uh, at least one disk SSD or HDD. And we can grow that to seven. And this is what we call this group. So what we call a this group, and in one host it can be multiplied by five. That would make 40 disks in one host. Now that's quite a lot of disks we have in that host, so we can grow already quite hard. Now we could also grow um, in um, with adding disks, we could also grow with adding hosts. With the same amount of this or a little bit less, we could, um, we could grow in whatever way or form we would like. Now, this is the hardware layer. We have disk groups, we have caching tier, we have capacity tier. Now let's talk about this VM, because that's the one that is the most important to the daily operations of our data center and our business, right? Now, we have our VM. That VM now needs to land somewhere on this platform. Now, we at VMware believe that we should detach every link with the hardware and this VM. So this makes it very, when we make no links, this makes it very portable over host, but also into the multi-cloud world. Now, look at this VM. What we believe at VMware is that we say we should look at storage differently. We should not attach a LUN to a VM, we should attach a policy to a VM. And that policy framework, that's what we call a SPVM, Storage Policy Based Management. Now, what is a policy? 
What is it? Now, a policy we can create with vSAN in multiple flavors and multiple ways, and there are a couple of rules that we can, that we can add to a policy. And I will give you a couple of examples. For example, a very important one is how many failures to tolerate do I want? So, what it means if we would translate it back to this environment, how many failures, component, host, whatever, can I tolerate before I start losing data? That's one thing, but also the method is an important one. Now, what do I mean with methods? We all know traditional RAID 1, RAID 5, we would work with a complete mirror, we would work with parities. This is the methodology behind it is the same, right? But also other things like, for example, quality of service. Or do we want it stretched or not? Do we want it replicated or not? These things we can all define in a policy, but there is more to a policy than only these four. Now, let's create a policy for this VM. And I would like to create a policy with a FTT. T equals 1. And I would like to create or do it with a method equals rate 1. Which means that in essence, this VM now becomes an object. And that object has been split into different components. And these components would like to comply with this. So if this object is 100 gigs, and it means that we should replicate the data over multiple hosts somewhere stored on, this, on these disks. Now, that component 100 gig has a component 100 gig. And here, we will write a witness. And that witness is there as a referee in the game. When something happens to these two, there is always a majority in the cluster that can basically take an action or not, or say this object now is writing to this volume only. But also, I have a free host here. I could also restore data to this one, if for example this one fails. So with that, we have set the basics, and with that I would like to uh, conclude the session. Thank you very much for watching, and let's watch another series about stretch clusters. Thank you very much.